Get your ears wrapped around the Golden State Media Concepts Basketball Podcast. All the scoop you need to know from college basketball to the NBA and even March Madness. News of your rising stars. Topics on and off the hardwood. This is the Golden State Media Concepts Basketball Podcast. Hello and thank you for tuning into the GSMC Basketball Podcast, brought to you by the GSMC Podcast Network. I'm your host, Jose Kidos. This is usually the point where I let you guys know what's going to be on the podcast, the certain segments I'm going to be talking about throughout the whole episode. Um, but simply put, there's only one piece of information that I felt was worth sharing. You know, one of those pieces of information that when you hear it, you don't think that anything else is really relevant at that point. So it didn't feel right to talk about anything else other than this. Kobe Bryant on January 26, 2020 passed away. And to to say that out loud and to say this on this podcast just feels weird. Because of just, you know, how much of a legend he was. He only died at age 41. And even more tragically, his daughter was with him. Gianna, only 13 years old, and, you know, I've, I've, I've been preparing this podcast for a couple hours, just really emotional about it, and just talking about it now is just that much harder, and, you know, I I personally, I was never even the biggest fan of Kobe, but it didn't really click with me just how important he was to my generation <laughs> in terms of his impact not only on the game of basketball but in the sports world as a whole and just in the world as a whole he was just a remarkable athlete a remarkable human being um unfortunately today or i want to saying this doing this podcast january 26 2020 he died in a helicopter crash at around 9 47 a.m some sources are saying 9 52 some others are saying in la he was one of nine people, like I said, his daughter Gianna with with her with him, and they were actually on their way to Gianna's basketball game. Um, and they decided to take the helicopter. Um, and with his with their passing away, they leave behind Vanessa, his wife, um, Natalia, his his eldest daughter at seventeen, Bianca, who's three years old, and then he just had a kid, um, Capri, who's only seven months old. So. It's it's truly truly heartbreaking news, and you know it's something. It's one of those deaths that are so impactful it stops everything happening around you. I remember I remember hearing the news myself and thinking, no, that's that can't be true. That's that's false news. Someone's just trying to get clickbait. It can't it can't be real. And the more I saw it, it, it becoming real, I just like I said, I couldn't believe it. And growing up a Golden State Warriors fan, <laughs> I grew up hating pretty much Los Angeles teams, and in which point I hated Kobe Bryant because the guy was just, he was on the Lakers, first of all, and second of all, he would always beat my favorite team. So naturally, I hated the guy. But stepping back from the heat of competition, you really just had to sit back and appreciate just his greatness and everything he did on the floor and now everything he's done outside of it as well. I mean, especially with his daughters. Since he's retired, he's been an amazing father, an amazing icon that goes past more than basketball, just an ambassador internationally. Um, I saw someone talking about how after he had retired, you know, the game of basketball exhausted himself because he gave everything. Like, I've never seen a player... You know, give so much blood, sweat, and tears to a game other than Kobe Bryant. He was just that kind of competitor. And his daughter was one of the reasons that kind of brought him back to the game of basketball. 
his like next mission was to further women's basketball and there are clips of him with Gianna, you know, teaching him, teaching her, excuse me, um, things about on the court that's happening and talking basketball with her and teaching her the fundamentals. There are videos of her practicing with him and videos of her in a game as well, hitting a turnaround shot that he used to make in his career. And it's just surreal. And in an interview, I forget who he was speaking with, but he was talking about how someone had said to him that, you know, you need to have a son to for them to pass on the legacy for him to take up the mantle for you once, you know, your time has passed, obviously, in the game of basketball. And Kobe was kind of just like, I don't I don't need a son. <laughs> you know, Gianna will do it for me in that WNBA. And I thought that was really special and just a really good, you know, point or perspective for him as a father. Um, and, you know, just the whole basketball community was obviously affected by this commentator Mike Breen before his his assignment as a commentator obviously was saying just how how sad it was and that because of how big of news with this was he didn't even want to commentate and he got the sense that a lot of players didn't want to play they were close to canceling a lot of the NBA games today um obviously they didn't um NBA players all played obviously but it kind of it, it's something they didn't want to do of course because they're so deeply saddened but something that I feel like Kobe Bryant really would have appreciated just because of how much of a competitor he was and he probably wouldn't have wanted you know the whole community um mourning him but instead to continue competing for him um a moment of silence was held at the first NBA game of the day the Nuggets versus the Rockets in Denver um, at the Raptors and Suns game, each allowed 24 seconds to run off the shot clock um, on the first two possessions without playing. So they kind of just dribbled out the clock, 24 seconds. Obviously, his second number in his career for the LA Lakers. So that was so it was a good homage to him to to do that. And then other teams kind of followed suit. Uh, Orlando took a 24 second violation, and then the Magic followed with an eight second backcourt violation to kind of pay homage to his number eight jersey as well um not just being 24 of course um but eight early on in his career the Knicks and the Nets also took shot clock violations at at Madison Square Garden which even more special was uh lit up purple and gold to obviously pay homage to him being a Lakers uh, legend the Pelicans and the Celtics also took violations and Boston's Jalen Brown pretended to take a shot at as the shot clock hit eight. So a lot of players affected by this teams, organizations. Um, Kyrie didn't even play tonight. He was somebody that really looked up to Kobe Bryant, loved him uh, as an idol. He was, he actually FaceTimed Kobe when he won his championship. So it was probably too hard for him to even try and suit up. Trey Young wore number eight seconds into uh seconds into the game just to pay homage to to Kobe and then ended up putting back on his own number 11 um but yeah a bunch of players and organizations putting out the shot clock I thought that was a great way for them to appreciate him and there's a great moment of silence before games as well lasting 24.8 seconds and you know this new age of NBA stars this these active players playing right now they grew up on Kobe Kobe was the Michael Jordan of this last, you know, generation before LeBron. And for him to pass away this young at only 41 years old is just something that, something that, you know, we haven't really seen something like this in American sports, at least not to this level. I mean, American sports, there have been some losses, of course, but it's really hard to put into perspective just how important Kobe Bryant was just as such a big figure i don't think there's any ever been any bigger icon that passed away at at such a young age in terms of the sports world it it reminds me of deaths like michael jackson like prince those kind of astronomical losses and it's it's tough to see because when he retired he it seemed like he was the happiest he's ever been you know being there for his girls getting to see them grow up and just be around more presently um like I said, helping out his da- daughter figure out the game. Um, 
and there were so many reactions from stars all over the NBA. I think D. Wade honestly said it best. He said, quote, it's like a bad dream you want to wake up from, a nightmare. And it that's truly what it what it felt like because it's just that shocking. You just can't really fathom it. And when he retired, he really became a person that could help mentor and grow the game. With as tenacious as he was as a competitor on the floor during his career, the moment he be, he retired, he kind of left all that behind. He didn't need to grill people all the time, didn't need to be up their skin competing against them. And, you know, a lot of stars, when they see him outside of the game as a retired man, they think, who, who is this new Kobe Bryant? And he was just happier. And he really was a mentor to a lot of players. I mean, he was still very active. He had, he had a show on, on ESPN Plus detail where he would break down players throughout the league. He would give challenges to players like Giannis saying he needs to get an MVP. And a lot of people could just look up to him as a mentor, as that kind of guru of knowledge, because he was such an intelligent player, you know, combined with how tenacious of a competitor he was. And for him to pass away is just, it's, it's an incredible loss for the basketball world. He had a lot of international love as well, so we're going to touch on that right after this. Are you looking for the very best NFL and college football podcast? Then check out the GSMC Football Podcast. Get the latest football news both on and off the field. From the NFL draft to trades to the rumor mill to the NFL combines, they got you covered. That's gsmcpodcast.com backslash football dash podcast. Get updates on college rivalries, game day insights, and much, much more. It's football talk the way you want it. This show eats, sleeps, and breathes football. Don't forget to like them on Facebook and follow them on Twitter. Visit gsmcpodcast.com for more info. SMC Basketball Podcast. I'm um, just kind of reminding everybody what this podcast is going to be about. It's just about Kobe Bryant. When he's passed away, as a reminder, um, from a helicopter crash early morning, January 26, 2020, at the age of 41, his daughter also on the plane, uh, Gianna, passed away at, at 13. And as soon as I heard this news, and I had been prepping for this with other NBA headlines. I just, I couldn't, I couldn't talk about anything else because he's not just a basketball icon. I, I, and he's a global icon. I teased it in the last segment. He, you know, he had a lot of international love as well. In the league now, there's every one out of four players in the league right now is a foreign player. And in the NBA, a lot of them were inspired by Kobe. And the reason why is because he's just a global icon. He's revered in China, one of the most you know, sought-after athletes in China. They love him there. They loved him there. And you know, with him passing away when with him passing away when he did, China would wake up the next morning probably to that news. They were asleep during the time. So I can't imagine what that community is feeling just because I know how much they had appreciated him as an athlete. Um, but it all kind of started with the 1992 Dream Team in terms of international um, dominance and and respect throughout the world um, of basketball and, and American basketball. And because Kobe came around just four years later, he came into the league he all of a sudden became this face of just global popularity. Once the Dream Team put, you know, America on the map, he's the one that really pushed the agenda. And I think it also helps with the fact that he had an ability to speak different languages. 
we knew for a fact he could speak too definitely in Italian and English because he grew up in Italy. I'll get to that a little bit later. English, obviously, his first language. Um, but he can make his way around with Spanish, too. I've seen him engage in conversations in Spanish and kind of just, it's it sounds like he's fluent. He spoke to how he only knows two languages, but he can he can speak Spanish pretty much fluently. And I think that's just incredible. And he also said um, that he was trying to learn Mandarin, um, which I think is even even greater because it just shows that he just wants to continue getting great in every facet of life. He was a person that was, you know, curious, highly intelligent, and wanted to be great in more ways than one. And he, for him to want to speak four different languages, I think it's just a testament to who he is as a person. And so because of all these things, become, becoming the global uh, face of the NBA and having all these languages, it really just, he had a lot of love just all over the world, whether it was in the NBA, the old NBA vets around the league, whether it's athletes from across the entire globe, in baseball, in tennis, in soccer, etc. Like he, he touched so many lives, even outside the sport. Um, speaking of which, he had, he was friends to many tennis players and he actually wrote a ch- children's book about tennis in 2019, which I think is even crazier to add that to his resume as well. Um, but there are just an outpouring of support on the global stage, on other sports as well. In tennis, specifically Nadal, Jokovic, Maria Sharapova, Coco Goff, and many more expressed their deepest condolences, obviously, to his wife and his family and just thanking him for his greatness. Um, I actually didn't know this, but Djokovic said that Kobe was one of his mentors at one point, that during a lot of injuries that Djokovic had, he kind of struggled a lot mentally and emotionally because uh, he was dropping off from the, the the rankings and was really struggling with the fact that he had to get back up to the top again at one point. And it was actually Kobe Bryant who was there to kind of help him and push him in the right mindset and just have his back in terms of his him getting back um, to the top. And so Djokovic, you know, obviously appreciated that, um, appreciated him as an athlete. And you never, you never would have thought of that because, you know, even though athletes obviously can communicate within themselves, but he was such a big star that it, it touched so many other stars as well. Um, Tiger Woods is another great example. He found out uh, at the very end of his, his golf game, um, fans were saying, do it for Mamba, do it for Mamba, and he didn't even know why they were saying that. And then once he got off, you know, the 18 green, they told him and five minutes later they got him in front of a camera and he was he was shocked he was so heartbroken and it just speaks to how big of a global star he was even in the soccer world as well espn fc which is just purely talking about soccer had a whole segment talking about kobe bryant and his impact (laughs) in the international game of soccer because he meant a lot to the soccer community and just a bunch of different clubs as well. Neymar, who's one of the most hailed stars in the entire world, if you don't follow soccer, he's a giant star at PSG right now. He scored a goal today, and he he flashed up at 24. And for a star like Neymar, who's Brazilian, playing in a French league, playing soccer, for him to flash a 24 and show appreciation to a star in the NBA, or that was in the NBA... Is just it's incredible. I think of all the American basketball stars that are kind of involved with soccer, Kobe was the most prominent, the most um, consistent, and most appreciated by like clubs all across Europe. I recently saw that Giannis um, was paired up with Kylian Mbappe, um, who's another great star for PSG, and thinking that it's so cool when you know sports can collide like that and stars can meet like that and have impact on each other like Lionel Messi and Stephen Curry a couple years ago exchanged jerseys and and autographs and I thought that was just so cool and Kobe Bryant was one of those players that did that a lot and I think a lot of it has to do with the fact that he had roots down in Europe 
um, roots in Italy, especially. He moved there when he was six, lived there till he was 13 because his dad, Joe Bryant, was playing for several teams over there. Um, but he ended up coming back for high school. But during that time, he just found a love for soccer and Italy as a whole. He loves the team AC Milan. They actually ended up tweeting him uh, for the passing. and They said, quote, We have no words to express how shocked we are to hear of the tragic passing of one of the greatest sportsmen of all time and Rossonero fan, Kobe Bryant. All our thoughts are with the families of those affected by this tragic accident. You will forever be missed. And, yeah, that's an entire club, one of the biggest clubs in Europe, in history of Europe. You know, speaking to his greatness and appreciating him, and there are other clubs as well that did this. I mean, Barcelona as well, one of the biggest clubs in the world. Um, players like Andrea Pirlo, I mean, if you're not plugged in with soccer, these are some of the biggest names in the world. Romelu Lukaku, um, Jesse Lingard, player on, on Manchester United. There's just so many people that cared about him across Europe and in the soccer world, and he's a basketball player. It's just insane to me. Um, but yeah, he, like I said, he knew Italian very well, spoke the language. Um, even during the NBA lockout in 2011, he almost joined Virtus Bologna, Bologna in uh, Italy, and I think that would have been massive because people love him over there. And to have that kind of international love is... It just speaks to how, how great he is, and it just speaks to his legacy. And speaking of his legacy, we'll talk more about just what made Kobe Bryant as great as he is right after this. Check out the show that's built on the MMA. From the UFC to extreme cage fighting, they got the fights covered. Check out the GSMC MMA podcast. Get the latest news on past or upcoming fights. Join us as we talk to and about some of the biggest names in the MMA, past, present, and future. When it's the fight game, there's just one show to check out. GSMCpodcast.com backslash MMA dash podcast. Don't forget to like them on Facebook and follow them on Twitter. Visit G. SMCpodcast.com for more info. Welcome back to the GSMC Basketball Podcast. Again, we're just talking about the passing of Kobe Bryant and his daughter, Gianna. Um, he just passed away January 26, 2020, early on in the morning from a helicopter crash. Died at 41, his daughter at 13. And it's just so unfortunate and still surreal. Like Even still just saying it, I, I can't believe it. It's something that... You know, he's such a big icon, and to die at such a young age, it's just mind-blowing, and it's hard to really grasp. And he has one of the greatest legacies in the sport of basketball. He's he's one of the greatest athletes of all time, and something that, you know, will forever, forever be quoted and forever be trying to be replicated is Mamba Mentality. And it's something that can't really be defined, although he did his best to do so. Mama mentality is basically just pure concentration, pure focus on what you're doing, and the tenacity to make it a reality. He competed like none other. The only comparison really I can have is to MJ, who you know is heralded as the GOAT still, but he was the closest thing to it. And I think... Like I said, he was he was the MJ for this last generation on in on the biggest stage in LA too, with the bright lights, you know, following a reputation like Showtime. He kept that going. He was the fire that kept LA going. His pure tenacity, and everyone my age, maybe even younger, a little bit older as well. If you're crumpling up a piece of paper and you're throwing it into the trash, you're yelling Kobe. 
I never did, of course, because I was never really a big fan of him. But a whole generation would, would be yelling Kobe. And it's funny because just a couple of days ago, I saw people tweeting saying that it's it's sad how nowadays no one does that <laughs> because he hasn't been in the league a couple times a couple for a couple of years now, and you know he's, that's that part of his career is kind of being forgotten. The whole Kobe um, people are saying like Curry now and stuff like that, just different new stars. People even say, like, LeBron or something. I don't know. It doesn't sound as – it doesn't ring the same as when people yell Kobe, just throwing trash away. Um, and he was known for just the one name. I mean, Kobe, that's all he needed. And he was just that well-known. Um, I thought it was really special, his whole career, really, straight out of high school, 17 years old. He was the 13th pick. That means 12 other teams messed up. <laughs> they messed up bad. And even the 13th team really messed up too because it was the, the pick by the, was by the Hornets who ended up trading to L.A. for center Vlade Divac, who was a very heralded center at the time, a pretty big, well-known center. And this trade was done by Jerry West, of course. We talked about him in a previous podcast. He just he knows talent. And his basketball IQ in terms of seeing talent is unparalleled in my opinion and for him to do this at the time was just a big gamble because you're betting on a high school sensation making the leap past college to play in the NBA and you're trading somebody like Diva who was a big center a big player and you know, obviously it panned out because of what he got to do. Jerry West also had like a six and a half segment, six and a half minute segment on ESPN where he talked about how, you know, he was just, he was just devastated. He said he felt like he lost his son. He said, quote, first you have a feeling of shock. Then you have a feeling of horrible sorrow. And then you start having all these recollections of the times I shared with him. Unbelievable. Just unbelievable end quote and i think that's probably the best description you can have because it is just shock and then you're so sad and when you the reality really hits you he was the youngest to play in a game of all time in nba history at 18 years old um by his just his second season he was an nba all-star just like that played one season coming out of high school and in the nba and then the next one he was an all-star. That's just how good he was. By his fourth season, he was already an NBA champ with Shaq. So a lot of people are going to say, you know, Kobe was carried. Um, but they won three consecutive finals. So if you want to say that Shaq carried him all three years throughout that entire time, I think that's insane because no one player can put an entire organization on their back for three straight years. Just look at the Golden State Warriors. They exhausted themselves. One back-to-back titles and couldn't even last the third because they kept getting injured. It's not an easy thing to do. And without players like Kobe, it wouldn't have been possible because of just how tenacious he was, how aggressive he was, even just as, you know, as a young kid. And once Shaq ended up leaving, that young kid became an absolute force in the league. Someone that no one could stop. I mean... When you say good offense beats good defense any day, that quote, I feel like, was made by the Michael Jordans, was made by the Kobe's. Because he would sometimes hit these shots that you just think to yourself, how is it humanly possible that he makes that? Especially those turnaround jumpers he would make or his falling to the side, tossed up for the win, buzzer beaters. Some of the shots he made in his career, just mind-baffling. One of the most impressive feats he's ever had was 81 points in a single game against Toronto in 2006. That still holds as the second highest scoring output by any player in NBA history other than Will Chamberlain. And it just speaks to his greatness because who in their right mind scores 81 points in a game? That's just insane. Some teams don't even put up 81 points. It's not as often, it's not as often as it's been in years past because of just the outpouring of scoring and three-point shooting nowadays. But 81 points 
That's insane. That that year, he won the scoring title, of course, and he won it in 07 right afterwards. So he's putting up numbers as soon as Shaq left. And then he got a league MVP in 08. That's his only league MVP. So when I think about that, I think that that's pretty insane because he's such such a great star. How is it possible that he only got one MVP? Then he finally got back to a championship in 09, did it without Shaq, and that was probably one of the most important championships for him because he had to do it without without Shaq. He proved the doubters wrong that he could do it without him. And then he followed that up by winning again in 2010, and that was important too because he wanted to beat the Boston Celtics, the whole Lakers-Celtics rivalry that goes back way past his time, brought back to life again in recent years. And for him to beat them was important for his legacy. And it also ended with two finals MVP in both of those, you know, NBA finals. And it ended up with him having five NBA championships. Not many players can say that. It He also, even after that, you know, he started, his body started deteriorating a little bit, having a little more injuries here and there. But nothing speaks to his mental and physical strength than when he returned from an Achilles injury in 2013 and then play three more seasons. I mean, not a lot of players come back from Achilles and can play at that volume, at that level for so long, especially when the Lakers weren't even that good. So he had to be like the man, the real man, to even make them competitive. And then something that I'll always remember for the rest of my life was his his finale, his last game, his last career game. And I remember it so clearly because... Because at the, on the same day, the Warriors were going for 73 wins. And of course, I'm a Warriors fan, so I want to watch that. I want to watch history. But it was Kobe who stole all the headlines. And I remember switching back and forth in the game. I was thinking, you know what? The Warriors are probably going to win this. I'll see it later. I'll watch the highlights. I can't miss this because it's Kobe. And even though I didn't like him, I wasn't a fan of him. I hated the Lakers. I had to watch it because it was history unfolding. I mean, he's an 18-time All-Star in his career, five-time champion, like I said, two-time Olympic gold medalist. He's a Laker legend in basically every single category. In points, he's first with 33,643. In three-point field goals, he had 1,827. That's first. Steals, 1,944, that's first. Games played, 1,346, that's first. And assists, 6,306. That's second, but that's because Kobe didn't like to pass, right? (laughs) And he had so many great mentors over his time, such as Bill Russell, who who said on Twitter, my wife um, Janine and I are absolutely shocked to hear the loss of one of my favorite people and one of the best basketball minds in the history of the game. Our hearts and prayers to Bryant's wife, Vanessa, and his girls. At Kobe Bryant, you were my biggest fan, but I was yours, end quote. And that's a heart-wrenching thing to hear because, you know, he did look up to Bill Russell as much as he did. He was, like I said, one of his mentors. And there's so many other people as well that, that gave love and gave quotes. And it goes beyond basketball, too. I mean, he won... The guy won an Academy Award in 2018. He took home an Oscar. He had an animated short called Dear Basketball, which if you haven't seen it, you definitely should. When you watch it, it hits different now knowing that he's passed away. Um, And and he also created a children's book series, which was inspired by Harry Potter, and it became a New York Times bestseller. So this guy was so well-versed. We talk about how he had different languages, his international popularity his academy award he just does everything is it's just insane and then even more recently putting things in perspective this is the most crazy thing to me lebron james just passed him on the all-time scoring list the night before he passed away james had inscribed his sneakers with mamba for life and 8 slash 24 kb in gold marker before his game on Saturday, showing respect to Kobe Bryant. And to see that, then him go on and 
past him like that the whole week leading up to it. You know, you you, you could feel that it was ha- going to happen soon. Obviously, he was right there. It's, it's LeBron. He's going to put up these numbers. Leading up to this week, there were videos of the two having their battles on the court and some laughs they shared together on All-Star Weekends and Team USA. And I was just thinking to myself, like, I wish we had more time to watch these two battle because they're in that GOAT conversation. They're both people that chased the ghosts of Michael Jordan, the two people that probably got the closest. And for them to battle as much as they did and have LeBron surpass him, it's just it's history in the making, and it's it's so astronomical of a headline. And Kobe even responded on Twitter the night that night he did it, the night before he passed away. He said, quote, Continuing to move the game forward at King James. Much respect, my brother. Hashtag 33,644. I think that's crazy. Kobe appreciated LeBron, LeBron, or LeBron's success. Wasn't mad. Wasn't like he could let go of all that competitiveness and appreciate greatness and welcomed it too. Like when LeBron first came to the Lakers, people didn't even want him there. People rioted because it's Kobe land, you know, and he said, nope, this is the next one. He's going to take over the franchise. He's the face now. Embrace him because he's one of the greatest ever. I think it's even more sad the fact that Kobe was, you know, set to be on the Hall of Fame ballot this year. He was eligible for the Basketball Hall of Fame. And it's just so unfortunate that we won't be able to see it. Um, and see him at least make a speech or what have you. Other news around the around the NBA, the Mavericks. Mark Cuban said the Mavericks are going to retire in 24. And then, like I said, the closest thing to Michael, and Michael responded, you know, to this news saying, I'm in shock over the tragic news of Kobe's and Gianna's passing. Words can't describe the pain I'm feeling. I loved Kobe. He was like a little brother to me. We used to talk often, and I'll miss those conversations very much. He was a fierce competitor, one of the greats of the game, and a creative force. Kobe was also an amazing dad who loved his family deeply and took great pride in his daughter's love for the game of basketball. Yvette Prieto, Jordan's wife, joins me in sending my deepest condolences to Vanessa, the Lakers organization, and basketball fans around the world. End quote. And for Jordan to say this, I mean, it's evident that Kobe idolized him, chased him, and transcendently became him. Like I said, closest thing to MJ. And it it brings me back to his last game. I mean, who goes out scoring 60 points, stealing the headlines from the best NBA season of all time in the Golden State Warriors, winning 73 games, losing only nine. But the whole night, the headlines were about Kobe's last game ever and him dropping 60. And like I said, we're not going to get a Hall of Fame speech from him. I know he'll be inducted for sure. But in his speech, his farewell, a raw, unscripted farewell after his game, after dropping 60 points, his last game ever. I think that can serve as his Hall of Fame speech, his last goodbye. And it's it's what I'm going to leave with this this podcast with you. So thank you for listening to the GSMC Basketball Podcast. Brought to you by the GSMC Podcast Network. I would like to ask that you please remember to subscribe to the show and write a nice review because that really helps us out. Also, you can please follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. I'd really appreciate it. Rest in peace, Kobe Bryant. Rest in peace, Gianna. Thank you for everything that you did for the game. And I'll leave you guys with Kobe's farewell after his last game because I think it's it's a good way to end this podcast. So thank you and see you next time. Man! <laughs> Guys, you know, it's, uh, I can't believe how fast 20 years went by. I mean, this is crazy. This is absolutely crazy. And, uh, you know, to be standing here at center court with you guys, my teammates behind me, and, uh, appreciating all this, you know, the journey that we've been on. You know, we've been through our ups and been through our downs. And, uh, I think the most important part is that we all stay together throughout. You know, I grew up, I grew up a diehard, I mean a diehard Laker fan. Diehard. 
I mean, I knew knew everything about every player that's ever played here. So to be drafted and then traded to this organization and to spend 20 years here, I mean, you can't you can't write something better than this. And I'm more proud I'm more proud of the fact that not about the championships, but about the down years because we didn't run. We didn't run. We played through all that stuff, and we got our championships, and we did it the right way. And uh, all I can do here is just thank you guys. Thank you guys for all the years of support. Thank you guys for all the motivation. Thank you for all the inspiration. And, uh, you know, what's funny, <laughs> the thing that had me cracking up all night long was the fact that I go through 20 years of everybody screaming to pass the ball. And on the last night, they're like, don't pass it. <laughs> this, has been, this has been absolutely beautiful, you guys. I can't believe it's come to an end. Um, you guys will always be in my heart. And uh, I sincerely, sincerely appreciate it. No words can describe how I feel about you guys. And uh, thank you, thank you from the bottom of my heart. I, God, I love you guys. And uh, I love you guys. And uh, my family, to my family, my wife Vanessa, our daughters Natalia and Gianna, you know, thank you guys for all your sacrifices. You know, for all the hours I spent in the gym working and training. And Vanessa, you holding down the family the way that you have. I, I, I can't, there's no way that I can thank you enough for that. So yeah, from the bottom of my heart, thank you. And uh, what can I say? Mamba out. You've been listening to the Golden State Media Concepts Basketball Podcast, part of the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. You can find this show and others like it at www.gsmcpodcast.com. Download our podcast on iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, and Google Play. Just type in GSMC to find all the shows from the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network from movies to music, from sports, to entertainment, and even weird news. You can also follow us on Twitter and on Facebook. Thank you, and we hope you have enjoyed today's program.